Hey everybody, it's Javad. It's a uh, Friday night and I'm partying out here in the speaker building woodshop. Some of you have asked about the kerfing that I'm doing on my next project. Uh, my next project is called Gintani and it's a three-way SB Acoustics uh, speaker. I'll post more information about exactly what the build um, entails, but uh, it's a three-way, uses SB Acoustics. They're actually Satori drivers, which is SB Acoustics high-end brand. So anyway, stay tuned for more info about that. I'm, I'm gonna be diving into that project. Uh, I'm basically starting, so. Um, I want, but I wanted to go over the, the, the kerfing and uh, kind of let you guys know the technique that I've found that works well. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. This is by no means the only way. I am not a kerfing expert or uh, innovator, but um, I don't know. I, I just been messing around with it. I come out in the garage, I try different stuff, and, um, and, and, it, and it works great. I love it. So um, here's some stuff I've been experimenting with recently. This is solid poplar. So if you remember my Pretty Persuasions project, um, a lot of people said you can't kerf solid wood, but works great. You just gotta kerf with the grain or against the grain, I guess. Uh, you gotta bend with the grain. And uh, this is some MDF, which works, but it, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the surface of the MDF cracks. MDF is really brittle. It, doesn't really bend well. And so if you even kerf it with really deep cuts, uh, so if it's too thick, it really splits like this. But I went thinner here and it, this pretty much stands out. I mean, it's, it's, it's acceptable, but this, the, the, the kerf surface is half the thickness of this and uh, it, it works, but uh, I'm not gonna be using it. I'm not a big fan of MDF anyways. This is some um, big box store, Pure Bond uh, maple veneered plywood. It uses solid poplar plies. It's technically a hardwood plywood. It's definitely not Baltic birch. It's certainly not Russian birch. And it's not the maple Euro ply that I just used uh, on my uh, rivalries project. But I'm gonna use this stuff because it has a nice thick veneer on it and it curves really nicely. And, uh, and then I'm gonna veneer over this with some walnut veneer. This is some um, maple Europly that I tested with, and uh, this is a good example. This didn't turn out well. The, the bend is not real smooth. The reason is the blade depth wasn't enough and um, the bending surface was too thick. So about half of this thickness is optimal. Uh, with with and, but it varies from material to material. Um, so this is the sheet of plywood that I'll be using for the Gintani project. So I just need to break that down and uh, use that. Um, so this Gintani project is going to be about three feet tall, and I'm going to be curving vertically three feet. So you know, it's going to be a pretty big unruly board. So I didn't really have a good outfeed table, so I just whipped this up. Um, you can buy these rollers on Amazon for about 10 bucks each. They're the UXL brand. And uh, so I got four of those. I built this little frame. These rollers are the exact same height as my table saw. And then uh, I used the T-slots in this table and I got these little knobs. And so this whole thing just slides on and off. And I can just tighten it down and mount it. And this, this table's it works good as an outfeed table. So, all right, so this is a piece that I just did for fun, practice, uh, and set up. I'm setting up the blade depth, and um, this is pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna duplicate another one of these with you guys here um, with the table saw roaring, and uh, you guys can see it in action. Um, but just to go over the basics of kerfing, the, the bend radius is determined by the center spacing of your cuts and the depth of your cuts. So the main thing that determines it is the center spacing and the number. So I'm using uh, 12 cuts uh, with quarter inch spacing. So that means from, from one side of the cut to the other side of the cut is a quarter inch. 
And this is producing an approximately uh, 1.75 inch radius, which I, I feel will have a great acoustic benefit to reducing diffraction on this uh, little tower speaker. Um, the, the angle that I'm creating is uh, 100 degrees. So it's, it's more than 90 degrees and it'll, it'll result in this nice tapered enclosure with big generous rounded over uh, corners. Um, so, you know, the, it's not rocket science. You just need to do some practice before you dive into your, your final piece. Um, the thickness of the blade doesn't matter that much. I'm using this Diablo blade. It has like a 0.09 inch kerf. It's, you know, it's not quite a tenth of an inch. Um, you can use a wider blade. They make thinner blades, but, uh, I mean, I don't see the point of kerfing for really tight radius bends. You could just use a router bit to get that. So kerfing makes sense. When, and this is probably about as tight of a bend as I would do because I have, you know, I could easily do a one and a quarter inch round over. Um, but this is even bigger than that. So, yeah. All right. So I've got my table saw set up. I use some uh, digital calipers. I set a lock. And then I set the, the height of the blade. So the, the height of the blade is, is currently set and it's good. Um, the other thing, I've got a really nice table saw here. This might be harder to do with a contractor table saw, but hopefully you could figure something out. You're gonna need a, some kind of stop for your fence. So I just whipped up this little block and I use a little Forzner bit to do a little recess so the clamp doesn't slide out of it. And it's just a little square block of plywood and it just, it slides easily. And then I use this C-clamp, which makes it easy. So what I do to create the curve spacing is I just use drill bits. Uh, this doesn't seem that advanced of a method, but keep in mind, drill bits, uh, you can get, you, ha you have them in every single size, right? So, I mean, I can go up 64th of an inch all the way up and down using these drill bits. Um, so I really like this, this method and technique. It's really accurate. And it's quick, and it gives me a lot of versatility. You can use a pin method. There's other ways to do it. But it would be tough uh, on a three-foot-long, three-foot-tall board to have the pin method. So th this method works great. I've got a nice fence here. Um, and I, I make a note. I write down my blade depth. So if something happens, I've got that referenced. Um, let me just try to show you. So... So what I, would, what I would do is I would tighten my block down, clamp my fence, and I would make my first cut. Then the next cut, I just simply, okay? Now this is spaced over a quarter inch. I do the cut. After that cut, I move the, the fence, the, the block over, space it again, exactly a quarter inch every time. Um, so I've got 12 cuts on each side. So I'm gonna run both boards at the same time and I'll do a setup and I'll run one side, I'll flip that board around, run the other side since it's all symmetrical and I'll just do both boards and once I get through all um, 12 positions, four cuts per position, I'll, I'll be done with both enclosures. The whole thing will probably take 15 minutes. Um, and then I've got this really cool, beautiful, amazing uh, shape for my enclosure that that would be really hard to, to duplicate with any other method um, all right so i'm just going to pound one out here let's see hopefully i don't cut my phone in half let's see sorry i'm not big into editing here so i'm just going to try to get this all in one take if i had to edit all these videos i would never make them I'm sure you guys know how much work that is, so. All right.
All right, so as you can see, that's quick and easy. This is pretty much perfect. Um, one thing you wanna look out for is when you do your kerf, you wanna make sure none of the little, the kerf pieces break. Uh, and that's, that's kind of a sign that you did it wrong. If you have to bend this and any of these break and kind of get sideways or step over or shear or anything like that, and you want it to be flexible enough that you could just use tape like I've done here. So if you're having to like cram this thing down and it's ripping tape like this, my opinion is you didn't kerf it right and the wood's still putting up too much of a fight. And when that happens, the wood, it, it starts breaking and splintering because it's, it's not bending, it's breaking. And you're having to use that force to actually break the wood fibers. But in this case, the cut depth is just right and it just bends and flexes just like it should. Um, the other thing is that I'm using a cross cut blade and uh, it, it has these little, you know, the, the, the kerf, each, the teeth come like this. So it's not a flat bottom cut. And, um, and so, so the, the depth, uh, you, really, you know, I don't know if you can see, but there, there's, the bottom of the cut is not flat, it's pointy. And um, that, that actually, I think, aids and helps in the kerfing because it gives you a little bit more give, but this is not a necessity, but I've found I like using uh, those types of blades. So, I don't know. I think, I think that's it. Um, there's, there's, you can get into other stuff about gluing and filling the kerfs. I, I personally don't know how important it is to fill the kerfs. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of space in there. Um, on the Pretty Persuasions, I, I squeezed a bunch of construction adhesive in there, and I think that got most of it. Um, you could try filling it with epoxy. It's going to be really messy. And you don't have to thicken the epoxy, otherwise it's going to run out. Um, it's up to you. It really is. Um, someone mentioned using, like, a Gorilla Glue, or which is like a polyurethane glue type on. And this stuff foams. I'm just not sure how strong the foamed glue is. When it, you know, and when you glue with poly glue, the stuff that squeezes out foams out, and you can just scrape it off with your fingernail. So I don't know if it would actually do much. Um, honestly, expanding foam of some kind would probably be a good idea. But uh, I, I, personally, I don't get too worried about that because um, it's, it, the kerf is quite strong and the bend is quite strong. And then you add your bracing in and that ties everything together. And then those curved pieces are just kind of along for the ride. So um, this is some walnut that I'm gonna be using. And I'm really excited to show you guys this Paduke I got. That's actually the color of the wood. <laughs> if you've never seen Paduke, it's neon orange. And uh, I'm really looking forward to working with that. Um, that'll be the second project after the Gintani's that will use the Paduk. Uh, the Gintani's will be another walnut speaker. I can't get enough of it. So, all right, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for following along comments. Uh, if you have any ideas, if I did it wrong, I really don't, really don't need to hear about that. So, all right. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon.